So in this video, I'm going to talk all about the linear gradients, radial gradients, and even the new freeform gradient tool inside of Adobe Illustrator. Gradients are one of those things that can make or break a design. Used properly, they can really bring some life and depth into your designs. Not used properly, and you look like a rainbow bright character. So we're going to talk about just basically how to use the tool, not really how to implement it into your designs in this video. Later on down the road, once I'm done with this basic series, I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about actual usage of this tool and how to make your designs look better with the gradient tool. But for now, let's hop into Illustrator and I'll show you how to apply gradients to the various shapes that you're going to be working with. So here we are in Illustrator. I've went ahead and created just a 1080 by 1080 artboard and I've added a few shapes to it. We're going to look at a radial gradient, a linear gradient, and the freeform gradient tool. And we'll use each one of these shapes for a different one. I can access the gradient tool in quite a few different ways, actually. I can get to it over here in the right tool palette. Or sorry, left tool palette. I can also access it here in the right tool palette, but this depends on which workspace you're set to. I'm on Essential Classic, so if you're not there, you may not see exactly the same toolbars. I can also hit G on my keyboard, which gets me into the gradient tool. And then if you've got the properties window open, you'll see these properties for it. I can go to window, down to gradient on my menu, or as you can see, I can also hit command or control F9. So I'm just going to go back to my direct selection tool and I'm going to grab our square. We're going to start with a linear gradient. Pretty simple, easy concept. It's just going to put gradient either straight across, up and down, or at a diagonal, depending on how we do the settings. So I've got this selected, and then I'm just gonna click on Linear Gradient. It's gonna go ahead and add a nice white to black gradient. So what I have now is Edit Gradient, and with Edit Gradient, once I click on this, it's gonna give me the options to edit the gradient live right here, and it'll actually activate this little gradient tool, which is a little bit different. You're making revisions to the shape on the actual shape itself rather than using this palette. Personal preference, you can do the same things, but it all depends on how you get used to using this tool. So from here, I can change the degree or the angle. Let's go say 90 degrees, and you can see I know I've got a 90 degree going top to bottom. If I want to go say 130 degrees, we then get something that's angled on it going almost corner to corner. Down here, this is my gradient slider, and I can make changes to the gradient colors and their positioning and their opacity through this. So if I want to change the position or kind of the break point between these two, this little diamond at the top, I can drag it left or right and it'll update the gradient for me. I want a little bit more black in there, I can do that. These are your color stops. You can drag these around as well, so left or right to get more or less black or white on this one. And if I want to add more color stops here, you see this little plus sign as soon as I get below the slider, I click and there's a new color stop for me. Now, If I want to change the color of these, we have a couple of different ways we can do it. You can either highlight the one that you want to and then use your color picker. If you had more colors on the screen, I don't right now. So I'm going to double click and I'm then going to get this little fly out. Now from here right now, I'm on grayscale and this little top menu gives me the options to change over to the type of color that I want to select. I'm going to go to CMYK. We're working on something for print. And then I'm just going to pick, see that nice pink color. Your other options, you can also select from your swatches, or again, you can go color picker down here. I'm going to stay on our sliders. If I want to rearrange these, and all I have to do is just slide them into the order that I want them in. And I can also change my location of each color if I want something a little bit more subtle or soft. Lastly, I can change the opacity. So I can click on this and I can drop our opacity down to say 60%. And it kind of washes out that pink, gives us a nice color pink to black to white gradient. All right, let's move on to our circle. So here we're gonna do a radial gradient. Radial gradient can take something like this, make it look like it's 3D instead of so flat or you can also use it just for creating special effects or different effects onto ellipses and even squares, I mean, any shape really. 
So I've got my circle highlighted. I'm going to go here. I'm going to click on the radial gradient and that's going to add our gradient. Now it added the last gradient, which doesn't look so good once we actually get it in use on this shape. So let's go ahead and I'm going to click on this little box here, this little drop down, and we're going to go orange yellow. That's a little nice, a little smoother. Now, if you notice though, this is actually a linear gradient. It's how it's set up inside of Illustrator. That doesn't mean I can't change it. It's just how it's laid out. If I go back here, now that I've got it selected, and go back to radial gradient, I then get my radial gradient. And from here, I can make changes exactly like we just did. Now, a good example here though, we're gonna, actually gonna switch over. I'm gonna go edit gradient so that we get this bar. And this little bar helps you to make a lot of different changes that you can't with just this palette. For example, if I wanna change kind of my focal point of where the gradient starts, right now it's centered. Well, if I move these around or shift the angle, angle's not gonna do anything for me. If I go reverse gradient, it's not gonna do anything other than put yellow where orange was and orange where yellow was. What I need to do is hover over and see that little X that just appeared on my cursor? That means that I'm hovering over this little black dot and I can then click and drag and I can pull that to where I want kind of that center point to be. And you can see the changes that it makes. It kind of pulls things out. So we can make this look a little bit more 3D or select a different light source if we're looking to create that 3D. So just with that alone and say a little bit of a, well, let's just go down here. I'm gonna put this in. I'm gonna send that to the back. And then we're going to change this to our white black gradient. And I'm going to change my angle on it. Let's not go that much. Let's go say 60. Move this over. Go 20 degrees or 20. Shift that a little bit. And there. We have a nice 3D looking sphere. Now, of course, I'd have to change this because our light source would actually be up here. Let's do that. Let's click that again, and then I'm going to swap this out. And we're going to grab that and put it up here. Let's actually pull it right out. So that's the basics of the radial gradient. Now, last but not least, we've got kind of a new tool that came out uh, just a couple of versions ago. And that's the freeform gradient tool. This one works relatively close to the same as the other ones, but you can actually add more stops inside of your shape, just like what we were doing up here with that slider. So I've got this hexagon. I'm gonna click on the freeform gradient tool, which is this last one here. And you can see that it's actually taken a mishmash of the last couple of gradients that we've worked with and combined them together to create this kind of funky gradient that's almost disco lightish. So to change these, again, I'm working live, so I can click and drag and you can pull this into the center if I wanted to. Now I've got it set right now on lines. You have two different options. You can either go with lines, which you'll get this little rubber band to show you where your next stop is gonna go and what it's directly related to. Or I can go points, and points is just gonna allow me to kind of click and drop new colors wherever I want to. You can change the sphere of influence on this by hovering over and then you get this little dot at the bottom. You can click and drag that out or in, right? And it grows how much that color stop is actually going to affect the shape. Or I can drag these into different spots and kind of see what it does to affect the other colors. Last but not least, I actually want to cover one more thing that I haven't seen a lot of videos talk about, which maybe they don't find any use for it, but there is use for it out there. If you're working in print and sort of doing brochure, business card design, stuff like that, it can add a special effect to some of your shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a new rectangle. Create it down here. I'm going to add just a, a regular radial or linear gradient to it, but we're going to add a stroke gradient to it. So by clicking on this little stroke icon here, I can add a gradient to that as well. Now I'm going to take my stroke gradient and we're going to make it, let's go 135 degrees. And then what I can do is I can apply different gradient strokes by clicking these buttons here. So this very first one, apply gradient within stroke. Now let's Pump our stroke up here. Let's go 20. So this is inside the stroke. This one is along the stroke. So when we do that, we get almost a picture frame effect. You click off. You can see, so that actually takes it and puts it at the starting point and then shifts it all the way around. So it starts at that yellow, right? Which is our first stop. And if we look at that first one again and go back, 
So this one is actually inside the stroke. So it's it's almost taking that same gradient, but put it at that angle that we wanted, right? So if I take this and put it at a zero degree angle, it's just going to blend in. You can see there's a real subtle change in color there, which can be a nice effect. I mean, it almost gives that bevel. You could put a, a shadow inside of here and create a different effect with it. And then lastly, we can have it go outside. So it actually goes from the inside to the outside and runs you see here it runs across the stroke so it starts on the one side and goes across to the other all right so that's it for this one designers i hope you pick something up so again the gradient tool when used properly can make your designs just pop off the page you can use subtle gradients to create depth and interest in your designs you can also go a little bit wild every once in a while it all depends on really what you're designing and what you're hoping to achieve with your final outcome so i got to get back to work now designers i hope you enjoyed this one now get out there and design something and I'll see you in the next one. I'm getting a lot better at these. I think we're coming along nicely. So I was trying to come up with something different for these outros. I, I'm lost on this one. But maybe we do this again. Do that effect. I don't even know if this is going to work. Yeah, whatever.